Hello everybody, Rebels of Cloud9 here, and welcome to my video demonstration on masking off camouflage. I've done this several times on previous videos, but I've never actually shown how I've done it. And I've always said I would do a demonstration like this next time I did it, but um, believe it or not, I haven't actually done this in a very long time, but all of a sudden I find myself doing this to two aircraft at the same time. So it's a bit weird how those things work out. This is a fairly simple technique that I like to use. I'm not saying this is how you do it, this is what you're supposed to do, yada yada yada. I'm just saying this is how I do it. It's a way that works for me and I enjoy it. And if it works for you too, awesome. If you have a different method, fine. Just <laughs> go do that method. That's okay. It's all good. Uh, so we're going to need a few tools here. First we got our subject. This is a Matchbox Spitfire. and. Next thing we're going to need is a fine tip marker. This is just a Gundam marker. It's got a very, very fine tip there. We're going to need some tape. My preferred tape to go to is Tamiya. This is the Tamiya 18 millimeter. I love this stuff a lot. Um, I like to use this when I'm doing this masking because it's wider. It allows me to cut and play with more um, of, the, of the tape on the model. I'm going to be using a sheet of glass, this is to cut on, and of course the very last thing we're going to need is the um, diagram of the camouflage. So this is the whole decal guide, and I've just, I have a photocopy of it here, and I know some people are going to say, well you just take this and you enlarge it to 70 second scale and you cut them out and put them on. If that works for you, go ahead and do it. I'm not stopping you. Uh, but what I'm going to be doing here is taking, I'm going to just do this wing section here that's bare, and um, let's put this down here. So looking at the, looking at the guide here, I need a piece of tape for the wing, on the wing tip here. So, put this on. Um, judging by the paper here, it starts here and curves its way up to the first gun. So I don't have the guns molded on, but I do have a gun bay. So let's put it at about here. I don't want to press hard. Don't need it hard on there yet. And I like to just mark off where the wing edges are and stuff like that. I'll do that to panel lines if they're deep enough and such. Just so I know where I'm at. Helps me to line it up a little better. So let's take our marker. And this is actually for me the fun part. So edge of the wing is right there. Let's go about here. Okay. It's about like that. And if you don't like it, just take it off and do it again. Or, if I don't like it, usually what I do is I just cut it differently once I get it onto the piece of um, glass like this. So, next step is pretty simple. You just put it down and slowly cut it out. And the nice thing about using a piece of glass like this, it allows you to keep the tack of the tape. And it provides a nice surface to cut on. You know, it's easier than cutting on a mat like this. And then what we'll do here is put this down. Oh, needs to be over a little more. Okay. Ah. There. There, there, there. That's good. That's good. That's nice. There you have it. So, I have all this extra tape left over. You can see on here. I don't throw this away. Nope. 
what I <laughs> what I do with it is I'll take stuff like this and cut it off about here. And put it over there. So it all gets used up in the end. I, I don't really waste a lot of tape. So I'm gonna go finish this wing and I'll be back and show you how to do curved sections in a moment. So as you can see here, I have a starting point at about right here, right next to the cannon, and it leads its way into the wing root, and uh, morphs its way up the fuselage. So how do we do that? That's actually quite simple, you just need to make longer pieces of tape. And I have my first piece down here. And just double checking the instructions as always. Put it at a bit of an angle. And what I always find important to do first is to make sure you get it in the wing root. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a little harder to, uh, to draw properly. So get it in the wing root. I'm happy with that. And up here, that should be fairly good. Okay, so let's go back to our paper here. Okay. And down. Where's the end of the wing here? Oh, went a little too far there. So let's just, this again, this is a nice thing here. Just up. And this basically goes down. Yep. Okay. So there's my wavy line and it goes all the way up just like that so again you just cut it out and it's the same thing you just pick it up put it down mask it off it's it's a bit of a laborious process to do but um, it works it takes a bit of time I actually find this to be quite fun to do um, but that's basically the gist of it and you know if you need to make things wider you need to make things longer you just put more tape down, add extra tape. So, uh, I'll gonna I'm just gonna sit here and continue masking this, get it all done, uh, paint it, and then I'll show you a final step that I do with these, uh, with these models after everything's been painted.
Okay, here it is. It's all been painted, and I have to say, quite happy with these colors and how they how they all turned out. But I can hear some of you asking, what do I do about paint buildup on some of the tape? And you're right, there's a little bit of buildup in here in this corner. There's a little scratch right there because paint wasn't as dry as I thought it was, and I somehow scratched lacquer off, but that'll be fixed later. But um, yeah, there's a little bit of paint build up here, so how do we get rid of that? How do we make it more even and uniform? Well, it's quite simple. I have a piece of sanding sponge. This is 1500 grit, and you can see it's old. Yeah, this is old faithful. There's hardly anything of grit on this anymore. And there's a purpose why I keep this, is because basically it's nice to use for burnishing off the paint like this. So basically, you can't really feel too much on this, but it's good enough just for going like this. And what you're doing here is you're just not even applying pressure, okay? You're just moving it back and forth. Don't apply pressure. Just move it back and forth and let this do its job. So let's just go here. There, it's completely smooth. It's like one surface. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do this to the entire model. It's not gonna take too long to do this. And again, just go in circles and resist the temptation to apply pressure on this model. Because if you start applying pressure, you're you're sanding, and basically you're just trying to get rid of that little bit of an edge, and it makes a nice kind of feathered out surface there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of this model, and we'll be back to wrap this up. All right, it's just that simple, everybody. It's just going over with this really well used piece of 1500 grit sanding sponge, and I can go over it with my hands here, and it just it's just smooth. It feels like it's one surface. So Hopefully, I might even polish it just a little bit more to help feather it more, uh, make them kind of one level. And I'm not, again, you're just moving it back and forth. You don't, you're not pressing on it. You're, you're just letting the, the grit do its thing. Don't press on it. So what that'll hopefully do here, if, I, if my results are successful, you know, when I put the rondelle uh, decals on here, you're gonna just see the rondelle and hopefully you won't see the edge line in here. I've had that happen a few times. So it's a bit of a trial and error process for me over the years, but this is something that I really like to do because I like the amount of control that I have with, with getting everything here. And you can go ahead and modify this uh, method if you like for however, however it is you want to model. There's not saying you can or can't do anything. Do what works for you. If this works for you, awesome. I hope it does. Uh, but again, basically, all you need are some uh, different sizes of Tamiya tape here, a uh, sheet of glass to cut on. I would not recommend cutting on your uh, cutting mat just because it's really easier to cut on that flat surface. It's, uh, it's a bit of a lengthy process to do this, but it's actually quite a lot of fun, and I like seeing the results of removing the tape when everything's said and done. So, that's how I do the masking. I did this on the Lancaster. I did this on several other models since then. It's just something kind of fun to do. And uh, if this helps you, that's fantastic. I hope it does. But uh, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. This is Rebels of Cloud 9. I'll see you all later. Take care.